does, I swear. By Sarah, one, two, eight, one. Chapter 25. Quitting Volcana is still standing. Yo, Kakashi greeted as he appeared beside Sasuke in a world of leaves. Couldn't you just walk in like a normal person? Sasuke demanded. Now there are leaves everywhere. If they bother you that much, just ask Tamari to blow them away for you. Kakashi said dismissively. And to answer your question, no, I can't. Sasuke waited for some elaboration, but it seemed like Kakashi wasn't willing to offer any. No, you can't because... He prompted. Because I'm not a normal person. Kakashi replied promptly. I hear that, Sasuke muttered. And because walking would have wasted valuable talking to my minions time or reading Ichi Ichi time, Kakashi added. Speaking of, where are Sharkara and Naruto? They went to go visit Neji in the medical area, Sasuke answered. Or at least that's what they said they were doing. Who even knows if that's where they really are. So, haunting his bedside, huh? Kakashi mused, rubbing his chin. I have taught them well. Sure, Sasuke said, and you have no idea just how surreal it is to hear people genuinely believe that. Well, when the students are amazing, the teacher looks incredible by default, Kakashi explained. Yeah, except you're the kind of teacher who thought we were good to go against people like Lee, Neji, Tamari, and Gara after having only ever taught us one thing, Sasuke pointed out. I had complete faith in you, Kakashi insisted. The only skills we had that we didn't have when we graduated. Well, except for Naruto having the ability to use chakra properly, which he really should have had when he graduated, was the ability to climb trees. How did that make you think, oh, they're ready to be tunins? Sasuke wondered. The second stage did take place in a forest, Kakashi noted. I've said it before. And I'll say it again, there is a reason I left, Sasuke said, shaking his head in annoyance. I know, Kakashi agreed pleasantly. I just thought that reason was Naruto's status as competent was giving you an inferiority complex. Okay, I feel sufficiently talked to. Why don't you go bother Naruto and Sakura now, Sasuke suggested. I couldn't possibly do that. Kakashi sounded shocked at the very idea. They're visiting a friend in his time of need, and to interrupt would just be rude. He paused. Not to mention Guy will probably be there. But tell me, why didn't you go with them? Because I don't really care about Neji's minor probably here by Tsunade now injuries, Sasuke replied. I figured that, Kagashi said, rolling his eyes. But why didn't Naruto and Sakura drag you along? Sasuke shrugged. Probably because Naruto was too busy dragging Sakura. Sakura? Didn't want to go? Kakashi asked, surprised. That doesn't sound like her. Besides, she'll want to tell Tsunade that she won. Against all odds. Apparently, Sakura's mad at me, Sasuke revealed, and Naruto wanted to give her a chance to cool down or something like that. Why in the world is Sakura mad at you? Kakashi questioned. I mean, it's not like you're still on her about being useless, right? Sasuke said nothing. Seriously? Kakashi asked. You know she beat Neji. Hearsay, Sasuke claimed. All I heard was that she's my next opponent and Neji got medical attention. You know she's not, Kakashi pointed out. So why are you saying otherwise? I may know that, Sasuke allowed, but fighting people when they're all worked up tends to make the fight more interesting. Besides, something tells me that once I actually do see her in action, I'll have to drop the pretending to think she sucks thing, and so I'm trying to milk it for all it's worth while I can. Kakashi snorted. That you did. And then you went out, fed it a soldier pill, and started the process all over again. Sasuke smirked. Details, details. You know, I appreciate your attempts to keep the peace until the match, but I don't think it will do much good, Sakura told Naruto as they made their way towards Tsunade's domain. I like that! An hour from now you'll either be fighting or your match will be over, Naruto predicted. True, but with Kakashi up in the Hokage box, Sasuke and I will be alone together while you're fighting Tamari, Sakura informed him. You won't be alone, Naruto assured her. I don't think Shikamaru is planning on leaving, seeing as how he appeared to be taking a nap when he left. She knows should still be there. Kiba might be there if he feels Akamaru is up to facing Sasuke, and Gara will definitely be there because he's still in the exam. As you said, Shikamaru is asleep, but even if he weren't, would he bother to try and step in and break us up if he wasn't already touching our shadows? Sagara shot back. Or would Shino or Gara do anything, period? Kino might, but then he'd be more likely to break up our fight by provoking Sasuke into attacking him than anything else. You're two are big kids now, and one of these days you're going to have to learn how to deal with people who go out of their way to make you mad, 
No, until Mac lectured as he opened the door to the medical area and stepped inside. I do know how to deal with them, Sakura replied, the very essence of wide-eyed innocence. It's accomplishing such a thing non-violently that's giving me pause. Being drunk helps, Sanari suggested, looking up from Akamaru. Kiba was watching anxiously a few feet back. I'm a bit young for that, though, aren't I? Sakura asked a little nervously. The last thing she wanted was to be on her mentor's list of potential drinking buddies. Kanoha's policy is to allow anyone who is legally an adult, which she became what she made Ganin, to have full access to alcohol. Tsunade explained. Civilians might have to show ID, but for Shinobi, just sporting a headband is enough. Drinking laws are in place for a reason, and I really don't feel that I'm physically ready for... Sakura began to protest. Oh, get over it! Erosin and Ingamabuta made me get drunk when I was signing with them and nothing happened to me! Naruto announced. And you cleared it from your system in a matter of hours! Sakura objected. You are in Jeremy and have insane healing abilities! Drinking doesn't work like that for me! Well, you can always drink less, Naruto suggested. Just don't come to me for sympathy when you're hungover, because apparently I'm immune. Some people have all the luck, Sonare muttered. Although my method of drinking until the hangover goes away is surprisingly effective. Besides, remember all the problems Kakashi had to deal with in why he, Sasuke, definitely you, and I aren't supposed to drink? Sakura hinted. All right, Naruto nodded once realization had dawned. You better stick to drinking with Shinsune or Eros and Ibanchan because Sakura is a total lightweight and would probably pass out after the first drink or die of alcohol poisoning or something like that. Wait, what have I told you about calling me Bachan? Tsunade demanded. Naruto shrugged. I have no idea, but I'm sure you're about to tell me. Not that I know why you even bother considering that I'm not liable to pay any more attention than the last 50 million times you told me. Whatever it is that you said about it. They save, Sakura approved. Don't call me Bachan, Tsunade shouted. Then don't be old, Naruto hollered back. Whatever Tsunade was going to say next was preempted by Kiba's happy cry of Agamaru, you're okay. I told you he would be, Tsunade reminded him. I oh, know, and I didn't doubt you, I just, I was so worried. Kiba gently picked Agamaru up and inspected him. Agamaru's eyes were wide and it looked terrified. What's wrong with him? Sasuke said he just sent him off to chase cats. If I found out he lied to me. He probably didn't, Sakura informed him. But since most of Sasuke's experiences with cats are Torah, well... Right. Kiba nodded. I'm gonna kill him. Okay, so I'm going to move Kiba out of the will step by by focusing attention on soul category and into the will join in category, Naruto decided. I wonder if I can convince Kara to play Peacemaker? That would be one of the most ironic things I've ever seen, Sakura remarked. Although the two of you trying to kill a friend of yours might set a bad example, Naruto continued. We already addressed that possibility earlier today, remember? Sakura reminded him. We made sure to stress that following our example as far as that went wasn't really the way to go. Was a team without a little attempted homicide, Tsunade interjected. Tommy knows it happens often enough on my team. Didn't your team have Orochimaru of all people? Kiba asked, a little put off at the thought of either trying to kill Hinata or Shino, or them trying to kill him or each other. Yes, why? Tsunade asked. And didn't it also have Jiroya on it? Kiba pressed. I don't see your point, Tsunade replied. If you can't, I doubt more explaining it will do much good, Kiba decided. By the way, Tsunade Sama, I beat Neji, Sakura said proudly. I had to take advantage of the fact he refused to take me seriously, but they did it. In the real world, people will often refuse to take you seriously, especially with your pink hair, Tsunade told her. Honestly, there's just something about a shinobi with pink hair that makes it difficult to be taken seriously. Exploiting that is an excellent strategy. After all, wait... The slug's hand and cut herself off. Are you saying that I just want to bet? The three Ganin froze. He, you bet on me, Tsunade sama? Sagara asked while she found her voice. Tsunade looked surprised at the question. Of course I did. What kind of teacher would I be if I didn't have faith in my own student? You know what? I think Akabara is fine now, so I'm going to go check in with my teammates. Thanks for waking him up, Kiba said hurriedly as he ran for the door. But! Coward! Naruto muttered. 
I swear to God me if there's an invasion because of this. So Nadi shook her head. But never mind that. I'm glad that my faith in you was not misplaced. Me too, Sakura managed to say, secretly wondering if it really would have been that bad to let Neji beat her and leave Naruto to deal with his issues. So where did you say that she was? Naruto asked, eager to escape the situation as well. Right back there, Tsunade pointed towards his bed. Be careful what you say. He's awake, but he seems to be suffering from some sort of existential crisis. That's probably just a sign of to Sakura's therapy too, Naruto declared. Tsunade appeared curiously at her student. You got new therapy jutsu? Since when? Sakura shrugged uncomfortably. Oh, you know me. Tragically large forehead and whatnot. If you say so, Tsunade said dubiously. Quickly, the pair made their way over to Neji. As Naruto had predicted, the minute Neji saw them, or more accurately, her, he immediately stiffened and his eyes widened in alarm. Clearly, he wasn't feeling up to listening to Sakura tell him all the reasons he should have won but didn't because he failed as a person. Oh, relax, Neji! Naruto urged. We stop causing mental breakdowns for the people we don't like! And you both like me? Neji asked. Have you ever tried to kill one of them? Naruto returned. Neji eyed him strangely. Of course not. Then we have no problem with you! Naruto assured him cheerfully. I have a slight problem with all the monologuing, Sakura confessed. I'm sure I'll get over it soon. I still can't believe I lost, Neji said, shaking his head in amusement. I should have won. Sakura shrugged. What can I say? Your overconfidence is your weakness. Well, that and your tendency to monologue. If you absolutely must, at least wait until you've beaten the opponent. That would be bad sportsmanship! Naruto objected. As much as I hate to say it, I think Sasuke might have had a point when he was talking about the Naruto kind of ninja, Sakura said incredulously. We're really not required to be sportsmanlike. But it's just an exam! Naruto countered. Sakura laughed. Just an exam? People have died, you know. So what you're saying is that I should stop judging people tr prematurely because they may surprise me or even end up beating me and I'll be much happier if I stop trying to rely on fate instead of personal responsibility? Yeah, she cut in. Sakura and Naruto exchanged a look. Sure, let's go with that! Naruto said finally. Feel better soon, Sakura told him. We've really got to get back. On the way out, they spotted Tsunade filling out a betting card. Not again! Naruto groaned. Isn't No, I don't, Sakura admitted, which is why I'm betting that the exam will end with an invasion in the middle of one of the matches. Welcome to the second round of the Chunin exam finals, Obito announced. The first match is a bye, so Bakara, get down here, please. Is he serious? Gara asked. Sasuke shrugged. Who knows? You should probably just go. Gara nodded and jumped off the balcony. Okay, so let the first match commence, Obito said. He waited for a moment. I see only one competitor able to continue, so Gara is the winner. Congratulations on making it to the semifinals, Gara. How do you feel? Confused and slightly irritated, Gara responded truthfully. Obito blinked. Strange, most people are more excited. Ah, well, to each his own. The second match is between Naruto and Tamari. Would you two please get down here? Well, enough, Naruto said. Sasuke, try not to make anyone want to kill you while I'm gone, okay? I have no idea what you're talking about, Sasuke claimed. Naruto turned to the supposedly more rational member of his team. Sakura, save it for the fight! It will come soon enough! Heading towards the stairs, he saw two Kusa Shinobi had cornered Tamari. These low-level tournaments like the tune-in exam are great for betting. Many of the ministers are here for that, one of them said conversationally. The other smirked. And so, this fight, could you lose it? I suppose anything is possible. Tamari said politely. We're glad we understand each other, the first one started to say. That said, I'm not going to throw the fight, and who tries to convince someone to do so without offering up any incentive? Tamari demanded. Listen, girl, we're not giving you a choice here. The second growled, reaching for his back. I get that you want whoever you're working for to win his bid, but do you honestly think that the cousin Kage's daughter managing to get injured on her way down the stairs is going to go over very well? Naruto drawled. And you has the final say on what your punishment would be, but since whoever you work for could have easily been the other way and you decided to go after me, well, you probably won't like the consequences. All this is inconsequential, though, because if you don't back off, then Tamari will make you. 
The good says, you know, we just glared at him before turning and leaving. I could have handled that myself, you know. Tamari informed him, annoyed. You did handle that! Naruto replied, I just pointed that out! And besides! He grinned. 